things are getting increasingly turbulent on Wall Street, a series of economic and financial indicators are pointing to the inevitable downfall of the stock market, a following recession and an inflationary spike like no other. Even legendary investors, experts and banks are sounding the alarm about the looming crash and the burst of several other asset bubbles formed over the past two years. All factors are coming together to create the perfect storm for stocks. And the meltdown isn't just going to affect the near-term outlook, but result in damages that are likely to stick with us for many years to come. But before moving on to today's discussion and sharing the warnings of some of the most prominent voices in the financial world, please don't forget to leave a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss our future videos. Since early last week, many notable market players came forward to alert about an imminent stock market crash. The long-awaited shift in monetary policy by the Federal Reserve has finally hit U.S. markets, sparking panic amongst investors while inflation continues to impact the economy and the finances of the average consumer. One of the most striking remarks came from a big short investor, Mr. Michael Burry. Admit a scenario of a slumping economy and extreme overvaluation in financial markets, stocks are poised to tumble, the investor said. In a series of now-deleted tweets, Burry argued that most investors are still ignoring the risks, but recent data shows that strategy may be able to backfire. Nye perched with a multiple problem, Burry tweeted, attaching a chart tracking the price-to-sales ratio of the S&P 500 Equal Weight Index. The ratio was below 1.0 for most of the 1990s and 2000s, but it has almost doubled over the past decade. It currently stands at 1.9, an absolute record high, the chart showed. The sign asset management chief wanted to show that the index is trading at nearly twice the revenue of its constituents, which indicates that the valuation multiples on America's largest public companies have been pushed to unsustainable heights. Barry believes that the price-to-sales ratio exposes the true extent of speculation in the market, even more than price-to-earnings and even more than price-to-book ratios. That's because it compares a company's market capitalization to its revenues instead of its profits or net assets. Over the past two years, the investor has repeatedly warned about excessive asset valuations, but now a breaking point seems closer than ever. To make things even more complicated, Burry also painted a grim picture of inflation. He said that the Federal Reserve isn't hiking interest rates to fight rampant inflation and soaring prices, but to have room to prop up markets once this giant bubble explodes. Watch profit margins fall and then price to sales ratios, the investor of the big short fame said. Early in an inflation, pricing power runs ahead of sticky wages and supply contracts. Inflation laughs last, needs not peak, but once. His argument is that at the early stages of inflation, big companies can raise their prices to offset surging operational costs. On the other hand, it takes time for their workers to negotiate bigger salaries and time for their suppliers to sign new contracts with readjusted prices. But those increased costs will eventually catch up with companies collapsing their profit margins. The fund manager expects corporate profit margins to be squeezed by persistent inflation, forcing investors to sell off their risky stocks and slash company valuations relative to revenues. Burry also highlighted that the U.S. Central Bank is not reducing its balance sheets and raising interest rates to improve economic conditions, but to have a plan B on hand in case it needs to come up with further liquidity to inject into the markets and pump up asset prices when they inevitably fall. The Fed has no intention of fighting inflation, he wrote on Thursday. Serial half-point hikes are forgetting elevation before stocks and the consumer tap out. 
Same with Rapid Fire QT. The Fed's all about reloading the monetary bazooka, Barry continued, so it can ride to the rescue and finance the financial put, he added, referring to the idea that the US Treasury and Fed are forced to always step in to prevent a financial catastrophe and consequently an economic collapse. Financial expert and best-selling author John Mortlin agrees that things are getting too rocky on Wall Street. The famed economist doesn't believe that the Fed will be able to tighten its policy in a way that doesn't result in a major recession. Powell and his crew hope to engineer the fabled soft landing, Mortlin said in a commentary published a couple of days ago. I really doubt they can do it. Recessionary forecasts have started to pop up in large numbers, following the rise of the two-year Treasury yield above the 10-year in March. Since the 1950s, every time a yield curve inversion occurred, an economic recession burst right after. Even though some have dismissed the indicator, arguing that other financial economic indicators are still relatively stable, and that Treasury yields are still being manipulated by monetary policy, in Maudlin's view, who correctly predicted, called the 2000 and 2008 downturns, and has been working in markets since 1982, there are plenty of signs that can prove that this time is no different than the past several decades. We have many indications recession is near, Maudlin emphasized. Amongst them is the fact that the housing market is starting to slow down as prices rise well above what buyers can afford. Strategists with the investment bank UBS have said that they can already observe a significant decline in activity and a slower pace of price appreciation as mortgage rates rise and inflation cuts into budgets. On top of that, another indicator is the deceleration in manufacturing with the number of new orders down. Even Morgan Stanley is cautioning that the decrease in production is enough to be bearish on stocks in the months ahead. According to the bank's chief U.S. equity strategist, Mike Wilson, the S&P 500 is set for a massive drop before September. Moreover, a third major indicator is the worsening transportation crisis in global markets. Citing the view of FreightWave CEO Craig Fuller, Maudlin said that the transportation industry will continue to impact the inflation outlook and that the combination of all these factors are forming a perfect storm that could potentially trigger a recession as early as the third quarter. As far as what a recession would mean for stocks, Maudlin said he wouldn't be surprised to see the S&P 500 fall at least another 40%. He said, however, that it's difficult to predict how much the market would fall, given that the high weighting of the bigger stocks in the index, which means the crash could be far more brutal. On a similar note, the famous author of the best-selling book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, Robert Kiyosaki, sounded the alarm on Friday about a hyperinflationary crisis and depression in America. He noted that the biggest bubble burst in history is fast approaching, and some cutthroat repercussions are going to hit investors and the average American really hard. Kiyosaki tweeted that a wily coyote moment is coming and that investors should buy gold, silver, and Bitcoin before the coyote wakes up. He made an analogy between the bubble and the moment when the cartoon character who has run off a cliff looks down and realizes that he's standing on thin air and then plunges. The market veteran warned that when the bubble finally bursts and the stock market crashes, the 401k will fail and retirement plans and pensions will be unpayable. Baby boomers' retirements will be stolen and the $10 trillion in fake money spending is ending, he said, calling the US government, Wall Street, and the Federal Reserve thieves. As we all know, America produces nothing anymore. We produce bubbles, you know? We just blow air bubbles, so we now have this bubble in real estate, stocks, and bonds. Inflation goes up, 
and the average American doesn't have a thousand dollars. Forty percent of Americans don't have a thousand dollars. So when inflation goes up, we're going to wipe out 50 percent of the U.S. population. And that is when the revolution starts. Kiyosaki also noted the implications of taking the U.S. off the pipeline, with rising food prices becoming a serious issue. He said, when Biden took the U.S. off the pipeline, oil prices went up. Oil produces fertilizer, and when fertilizer is no longer cheap, people can't produce food, and the average American has nothing. So 40% of Americans have nothing, and inflation is going to make them very upset. The stock market crash will bring down the baby boomers, so we're in serious, serious trouble. The prospects of a sudden downturn continue to grow. In the meantime, short sellers are securing their positions to navigate through the coming stock market crash. The latest data from S&P Global Market Intelligence shows that short interest in the S&P 500 jumped by 11 basis points from 2.09% to 2.2% between the end of last year and mid-March. Bets against stocks across every sector in the benchmark except rose by meaningful amounts during the period as the index plummeted from all-time highs earlier in the year. It's comprehensible why so many short sellers are betting on the market's collapse. Investors have faced a turbulent start of the year with not only a 40-year high in inflation, but also supply chain problems aggravated by the conflict between Russia and Ukraine. And now, the last nail to the market's coffin, rising interest rates. The early headwinds were enough to drag the Dow Jones, the Nasdaq, and the S&P 500 into a correction. That's why some say now is the perfect time to short on US 30 stocks. That initial shock is going to be dwarfed by the next blow. According to Barry Bannister, the chief equity strategist at Stifle, a St. Louis-based investment bank, that may be just the start of the pain for passive buy-and-hold investors. Buy-and-hold is the ideal strategy in the bull phases, but in the down phases, being in the index is not going to generate a positive return. Investors who are passive are going to suffer, Bannister told Insider in an interview last week. As long as the laws of supply and demand exist, we're going to have supply chain disruptions, geopolitical rivalries, fiat currencies, indebted governments, populism, and profit margin and regulatory pressure, Bannister noted, arguing that the current market cannot stand against so many negative factors without liquidity support. Even Goldman Sachs is warning about the potential for a lost decade for passive investors, especially those who stick with historical allocations like the classic 60-40 portfolio, which is named for its allocation split of 60% stocks and 40% high-grade debt. So far, the portfolio is down roughly 7%, as low interest rates and inflation have turned real bond yields negative. The current crisis makes forecasting risk parameters such as the risk of loss, volatilities and correlations only more challenging. This backdrop means that investors must take on more risk for the same expected return. Henry McVeigh, KKR's head of global macro balance sheet and risk, and Rakim Aluani, a managing director, told Bloomberg. In essence, all of this means that when the market plunges, returns are likely to be dismal for the next 10 years or so. In such an unprecedented environment for most investors, the stock market is behaving in unprecedented ways too. But the bubble can only grow to a certain extent before it bursts. And it has already been stretched to its limit. So, right now, pouring more money into risky assets is not an investment, but a gamble. At this point, the main question is, how many out there are willing to lose everything?